bad blocks. How to create virtually unusable blocks. Every application which uses Blockly defines a language. Sometimes the language is small. Sometimes the language is large enough to use categories. But what happens when the API one wants Blockly to control is exceptionally large? The Google App Script API is a good example. We've got hundreds of functions. That means hundreds of blocks. Creating each block manually would be a huge waste of time. A smarter approach would be to write a script to convert the existing API documentation into JSON block definitions. In a few seconds, one has generated hundreds of blocks, and the job's done. Don't do this. Automated block construction is a disaster for five reasons. First, having too many blocks makes it hard for users to find the blocks they need. Categories aren't enough, and the toolbox starts to sprout subcategories. When a developer asks the Blockly team for better toolbox search capabilities, that's usually a sign that their blocks are out of control. Now, for some projects, having a large number of blocks is in and of itself not a problem. I think Blockly Arduino is a good example of this, since they are supporting a bunch of isolated libraries. Second, take a look at this example. Here's a bunch of blocks that access list elements. With a bit of thought, all these blocks and more could be combined using a couple of dropdowns. The two dropdowns on this block offer 15 different functions, and thus it replaces what could have been 15 separate blocks. In this case, the dropdowns have dynamic actions, reshaping the block to add or remove inputs as needed. In AppScript, this is the chaining sequence to get the values in a spreadsheet. Spreadsheet app, get active spreadsheet, get data range, get values. A straight conversion of the API to blocks would mean that the user would need to chain together four blocks. Blockly generally works better as a higher level language. In this case, one should just have a single block that gets the values. APIs often don't provide enough information to create good user inputs. For example, every input in this category is a text input. There just isn't enough detail in the API to generate anything else. Wouldn't it be better if anchor units had a drop-down input with pixel, point, percent, and so on? Wouldn't it be better if anchor offset had a numeric input? Wouldn't it be better if bold had a checkmark input? Wouldn't it be better if font color had a color picker input? Taking a step further back, wouldn't it be better if all the font related blocks were replaced with a single block that had a comprehensive font picker input? One of the great things about auto generating blocks from an API is that as the API changes, so do the blocks. All you have to do is rerun the script. This results in lower maintenance costs. However, it also breaks existing user code. If a block disappears or changes in a way that is not backwards compatible, users won't be able to load their saved programs. In a conventional text-based language, a changed API just means the user needs to edit their code. But in the case of Blockly, the whole program is lost. This is one reason why one should not auto-generate blocks, then plan to update them later. Once a block is published, it must remain forever available to the application, although it can be admitted from the toolbox. Shh. If your application has too many blocks to curate manually, then it has too many blocks for your users to use. Spend time thinking carefully about your blocks. Don't transfer your pain onto your users.